Pascal Siakam has had an electrifying start to the season, but I have some numbers that indicate that these numbers may be sustainable for Pascal heading into this year. Additionally, we have an Otto Porter Jr. and Scotty Barnes injury update. We have Heat fans turning on the Groat Kyle Lowry as well as possibly the worst Raptors trade proposal I've ever seen. So a bunch of stuff to dive into. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here at the Raptors Guide. Just breaking down the latest Toronto Raptors news. We have a lot of topics to cover, but please subscribe to the channel if you guys want to stay up to date on all of the latest Raptors news. We're almost at 26,000 subscribers, so it would mean the world to me if you guys could hit that sub button. But the first thing we're discussing in this video is Pascal Siakam has become a true number one option. And why these numbers he's putting up to start the season may be sustainable going forward throughout the year. Now, Pascal Siakam has come into this uh, this season averaging 27 points per game, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, and shooting 48% from the field and you know, a little bit below his usual career average at 29% from the three-point line. The free throw percentage is also a little bit ugly at 70% from the free throw line, but these numbers have been absolutely tremendous. And we've been raving about him on all the post-game podcasts. Every chance we get surrounding Spicy P, this guy has been on absolute fire this entire season whether it be in the mid-range whether it be finishing he's making great decisions and the improved passing ability has just been a marvel to watch as a Toronto Raptors fan but I have seen a bunch of people say it's early in the season we can't overreact spicy peas just on a little hot streak he's been chewing down some spicy pea peppers right we can't uh, get too overexcited now while fair enough these are remarkable stats something that's a dramatic jump from anything we've ever seen from Pascal Siakam in terms of overall, you know, season statistics. But this isn't something new for Spicy P. As if you look at the stats, the crazy thing that uh, about Pascal Siakam is that he's averaging 28 points per game, 10 rebounds, and 7 assists in the last 25 games while shooting 50% from, 53% from the p- field if you date it back to last season. And 16 of those 25 games have been against playoff teams four of them this season and i don't know about y'all but uh that's easily top 10 stuff that's why i saw from a little reply i went into basketball reference double check the stats but it was summed up there pretty perfectly but not only are those numbers for this current year below what he was doing at the end of last season but they're maintained they're sustainable he was shooting more efficiently at the end of last year this is something the last 25 games pascal has been performing elite level at and they're all against pretty established strong playoff contending teams a problem with pascal siakam in the past is we say oh he bullies these scrub teams and then we're going up against top level matchups and he crumbles under the pressure but no He's hitting clutch shots, as we saw last night. He's able to go up against some of the top defenders in the NBA and produce at an efficient level, and he's doing it night in, night out, and it's not just an early season blip. So, you know, Pascal came into the season saying he wants to be a top five player in the NBA, and he's looking like it, at least to start off this season. Let me know if you guys agree that this could be sustainable going forward into this year. I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below. But the next thing we're discussing is Otto Porter Jr. and a Scotty Barnes injury update. Now, a huge topic of discussion, especially when uh, Scotty Barnes went down, is how serious is this injury? And I'll say it from the jump, it doesn't seem like it's that bad for uh, Scotty Barnes, as he's been listed as questionable for tomorrow's game against Philadelphia. However, the thing I'm a little bit more intrigued about is Otto Porter Jr.'s situation, as he is listed as doubtful, but that is an upgrade over out. Now, what does that sort of mean? Why is that more intriguing, more exciting as Raptors fans? It's really because... We haven't got a clear timeline on when Otto Porter Jr. is going to be returning from his injury, right? We've sort of been left in the dark as Raptors fans wondering, oh, could this be a month-long thing? Could this be a you know a day-to-day thing? What's really going on with Otto Porter Jr.? He missed the entire preseason and now missed the first four games of the year. But the fact that he's questionable means we likely won't be waiting now uh, a few more weeks to see Otto Porter Jr.'s debut on a Raptors jersey. And that is huge for this team. We've been discussing it on videos. The Raptors need a stable presence off their bench to continuously get us buckets. Because currently we're throwing in Delano Banton, we're throwing in Precious Achu, we're throwing in Malachi Flynn. And while Precious certainly can give you high of hives, which we saw in last night's uh, performance, 
Delano Banton, Malachi Flynn, and Precious, they're all remarkably inconsistent. So having Boucher back in the lineup, who dealt with some foul trouble last night, but is usually good for at least 10 points a game, and then Otto Porter Jr., who is a starting caliber player on a championship team, coming off your bench to knock down threes, play elite defense, that will be a huge addition to this Raptors squad. So it's nice that he's getting back into the mix. I'm sure the Raptors aren't going to rush him back, but I'm excited that... uh. You know, we at least hear something that he's on the mend and he should be returning doubtful, I'd imagine, in the next week or so. So stay tuned to that for, uh, you know, the, the latest auto. Stay tuned to the channel for the latest Auto Porter Jr. updates. But the next thing we're discussing is Miami Heat fans turning on the Raptors' growth Kyle Lowry. Now, following last night's game, if you read through Twitter, if you read through Miami Heat Reddit pages or fan pages or whatever... They didn't have the kindest words for, uh, you know, fan favorite for the Toronto Raptors, Kyle Lowry. As the thread popped off on their uh, on their Reddit uh, page saying that uh, Kyle Lowry won for eight, seven points, two assists, 30 million this season and next season. This dude is so washed, he belongs in the ocean. Dude stinks. Lowry needs to be traded before we have to throw him away next year, too. Then uh, there's a bunch of comments. I'm only going to highlight a couple because I only have so many buttons to show this video in. But what has this guy done to deserve the benefit of the doubt from so many of that so many have given him? He's a bum. He missed half of the season for mysterious reasons last year. Shot 20% in the playoffs. He's right back to where he where he left off now. The team has made a lot of horrible moves post the big three. Now. Obviously, as a Raptors fan, we're going to be back in Kyle Lowry till the death, right? We know what he brings to a team, the value that he provides as a playmaker and stuff, but he definitely has, in the first four games of the season at least, not performed at an extremely high level for the Miami Heat, only averaging 11 points per game, four rebounds, but what's really fallen off is the assists, the playmaking, only four assists, and then the efficiency. 28% from the field. That's right, 28% from the field from a guard that has the ball in his hand so much. That's pretty brutal. And 28% from the three-point line. Not the best stats there for Kyle Lowry. I can't disagree. But it's interesting to see the Miami Heat fans turn on him, especially, you know, after watching the Raptors play a couple games. They're buying into the propaganda. A lot of them are mad that we ended up, uh, they had to give up Precious Achua for acquiring Kyle Lowry. They're saying the Raptors made the smart move and not paying the dude, even though he had sentimental value to the squad. But as much as I love seeing the Miami Heat's downfall, it sucks seeing all the, you know, the, the tarnishing of the name of Kyle Lowry. And I think they'll, the Miami Heat will be fine. I think everyone, uh, the Heat will be good. We watched them play for the past two games. They're still an elite team. They're uh, breaking down a video on Courtside Digest dropping tonight on a bunch of moves that they're trying to make as well in the coming uh, in the coming weeks to shake up their roster. They'll be good, but Raptors fans have overreacted to Kyle Lowry in the past as well as ups and downs. He's coming into early season struggles. He doesn't look in the best of shape either coming into this season. So, I don't know. Just wanted to shed some light on people turning on the Raptors' growth, especially after we... Uh, kind of bullied that squad for the past couple of games. But the next thing we're discussing is the poss possibly the worst Raptors trade idea I've ever seen. And folks, no, this is not coming from Bleacher Report, surprisingly. I had to make this, it's probably a, a recycled graphic from uh, the summer as I saw a lot of bad Bleacher Report takes the, the summer, but no, this was actually posted in the Discord by Pop-Tart. Shout out Pop-Tart. All the legends popping into the, the Discord, but that's how I caught it. But I think the, the channel name is AM Hoops. They came out and essentially dropped uh, this, this graphic. Essentially that the Lakers would then acquire Fred Van Vliet, Otto Porter Jr., and Evan Fournier from the New York Knicks. The Knicks would acquire Pascal Siakam, who we just praised. Obviously, Fred Van Vliet was an all-star last season. Otto Porter Jr. was an NBA championship champion last season. Pascal was all-NBA. And then the Raptors would acquire none other than... MVP Russell Westbrook, Cam Reddish, who can barely get on the court for the New York Knicks, Otto Obi Toppin, who uh, you know did have a solid end of last season, but is not an upper tier prospect I'd be interested in. Same with Quinton Grimes, has had flashes, and then you know a few first round picks. Folks, the LA Lakers are talking about uh, they're talking about sending their two first round picks for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner, two guys that haven't even sniffed. An all-star team. Two guys that one Buddy Heald was a throw-in in a trade last trade deadline. Miles Turner is a guy that can barely stay on the court. Is probably the most overrated center, at least amongst Raptors fans I've seen, because you know he in theory is really good. He blocks a lot of shots, but isn't that mobile of it? I won't dive into Miles Turner's lineup, but that's what the the, the market value for a couple of Lakers picks are.
We're throwing in a couple whack, whack New York Knicks first round picks. Then they would be having uh, Pascal Siakam added to their core group. Like a Knicks pick and a couple Knicks picks and a couple Lakers picks. I'm not, I'm not doing that for, the, for some nonsense that, that we got going on on this front. That is the dumbest trade idea I've ever seen. And don't even go to the video and roast the comment. Don't give them views because this is more egregiously bad than most of the Bleacher Report trades I've seen. So... Folks, that is, uh, I don't know, the Raptors being in full-out tank mode. It's stupid. We're giving away two All-Stars for basically a bunch of garbage. Not not happening. Not happening. Not sending our guys to big market teams for that. But uh, the next thing we're discussing is the Raptors' stats, impressive stats in the clutch. Now, this season, the Toronto Raptors have had lulls in their games against the Cavs, the Nets, and the Miami Heat in both games. Usually in the second or third quarter, the team just goes on an absolute scoring drought. But whether or not we won the game or lost the game, come fourth quarter time, come money time when the game's on the line, Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent Jr., even OG Ananobi have been stepping up down the stretch. And in fact, so much so, the Raptors have had elite clutch stats to, you know, and to start off the season. And this is a stat coming down uh, saying that the, for 21 teams that have played at least five minutes of clutch basketball this season, which is just basically minutes that are less than five minutes left in the, in the game, but the game is within five points. This is how they rank in terms of net rating. The Raptors, plus 61. Nearly, not double, but uh, nearly double. The, the second best team in the Detroit Pistons, who... I've, uh, I've got a win under, I don't know their uh, current rank in the standings, but the Nuggets, the Blazers, and the Suns. I know it's a small sample size, but this has been an issue for the Toronto Raptors in the past, and especially where we say, oh, we don't have a number one option and all that sort of stuff. The fact that we're coming out and closing games, whether it ends up being a win or loss, but we're executing down the stretch when the game matters most, that is a huge indication, especially when we clean up the middle part of the game once our get bench gets a little bit more healthy. We're capable of closing games. We're also one of the most efficient three-point shooting teams this season. Those are all huge pluses because those are the major question marks coming into this year. So Raptors fans should be really excited about that. But the final thing we're talking about is Caleb Martin speaking out on the Coloco confrontation. Now, a, bit, a lot of news was made about uh, Coloco getting fined and unfairly thrown out of the game. The first matchup against the Miami Heat. I uh, ranted about that on a couple videos on this channel. But, you know, Caleb Martin was also getting some flack, as anyone does, that goes against, you know, a Raptor fan favor or fan... Just, a Raptor in general, right? Whether he's a fan favorite or not. But Caleb Martin came in with a mature response to the to all the controversy in the hit, essentially saying it's a thousand percent on me. He also described how uh, he ended up reaching out to Christian Coloco, apologizing, letting him know what was going on. So mature, uh, mature take from Caleb Martin. Obviously, still kind of a clown for standing over him and then pulling the edge spear, you know, throwing him into the first row of the stadium. But I appreciate him coming out, being mature, and uh, you know, reaching out to Christian Coloco, apologizing, and all that sort of stuff. So, good stuff there for Caleb Martin. I won't, uh, you know, the Raptors always get bad blood with guys like Aaron Gordon and stuff, guys that go at our players, but no hate to Caleb Martin and Miami Heat or anything like that. But, folks, you guys are the best to make us far. Check out the Instagram, the TikTok, the Twitter, all that cool stuff. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You guys are the best. I'm signing out. Cheers.